Whether it's my morning espresso or another household item like this 5 litre industrial borosilicate or Pyrex beaker, I often find the need to swirl things, but as you know, trying to do that by hand is a complete waste of time. The problem being, industrial wobble tables like this or orbital shakers are expensive because they've got the word pharmaceutical or laboratory in their name. Similar to airline or wedding or baby, things get expensive when you put that word in their name. But there is a solution. The word broken. So why did I spend 71 of my English pounds getting this delivered to me, a broken piece of tat. It all comes down to this, it's the item description. Now it says that the motor can be heard spinning and that it powers on, which is a really good sign and hopefully means it's only a small fix. First step to any project like this is taking it apart, and that means the zeroth step is to clear the mess on my desk. You don't get to see that. No, I don't think the weird audio will give away the fact those were clips of me putting it back together that I then reversed. Anyway, I've I found no mechanical linkage broken inside like the listing suggested, but I did find this. It's a control board of some kind with rust on, and I'm no electronics expert, but I know that's not a good thing. Clearly, all I can do now is take it apart and see what's damaged. It's hard to look around all those components when you've got an aluminium case in the way. Hopefully, it'll be something I can fix. So what have I figured out? Well, clearly there's been some water damage, and I think it's all of this area up here. Now, hopefully, none of the integrated circuits, none of the chips that have any of the clever bits on have been damaged. They look pretty good, but a lot of the components around are damaged. And certainly, this thing here is damaged. It looks like a transistor. Um, it's got three legs, and it's kind of the correct shape for what I think is an NPN or a PNP transistor. Uh, and hopefully that means that it can just be taken out and replaced, and if that's the case, it might just work with that. The difficulty is knowing what the part is. I'm going to see if I can get in with some bright light and take a photo of the part, and hopefully that'll tell me exactly what this is, so I can take it out, replace it, and see if it works. This looks really bad. Under magnification I can see just how much damage there is, and to be honest I'm thinking I've wasted my money here. But I guess all I can do is keep pressing forwards, and so I'm going to give everything a really good clean, try and get some of that rust out and hope that with some isopropyl alcohol and a bit of time I might be able to save this board. It does seem like projects often reach this stage where you hit the limit of your knowledge and you don't really know what to do, and generally I do the same thing each time, and that's just give everything a good clean. Even if it's not actually doing anything, it gives you some mental space to think about what to do next. And it's quite satisfying as well, especially when things are as cruddy as this thing. Clearly at some point in its life some water's managed to drip through the casing and onto this board. I'm a bit surprised in a way that there isn't any cover over the top, but I guess it's a good warning to me in the future. If I spill anything or any drips get loose onto that case I should clean them up straight away. Sometimes manufacturers hot electronics or cover them in a kind of epoxy resin to keep them waterproof, but I guess in this case it was either an expense too far or they just didn't think they needed it. On the plus side, all my cleaning's paid off. I can see that one of the legs of that transistor is broken, and I can see the part number. Now that I've figured out the problem, I need to get rid of that component, and there's a couple of different ways you can do it. The standard way that most people think of is a soldering iron and something like soldering wick. This is copper braided tape and it'll absorb the solder once it's liquid. But if you do this a lot, or just fancy a fancy toy, then there is another option. And it's inside here. Also inside here. The Hakko FR301 D soldering gun. This bit is a soldering iron and it's got a little hole in the middle which connects to a chamber back here and that connects to a vacuum pump in the handle so that when you press the trigger, if it were plugged in, it would suck the solder back in. It's really quick, really simple, keeps all of the solder contained and if you don't know if it's lead free or not, it's a nice way to keep you a little bit safer. You might have seen me talk about this on my Instagram story, but if you didn't you should go and subscribe. He means follow. Now I've taken it out you can see just how badly corroded that part is. Luckily it is a transistor and I could see that it's part of the kit that I've got at the top there. I just got this from Amazon, it's got a couple of hundred different transistors of different types and this one was part of the kit.
you can probably tell it's important to put it around the right way. Each of these legs do different things. There's a base collector and emitter, I think, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. The easy thing is that whoever made this PCB put a little silkscreen mask over the top, just in case you've forgotten. Once I bent the legs in place just to hold the part, I could flip the board over and solder it from the back. You can see that some of the PCB green bit has kind of broken off in the cleaning process, but I'll get onto that later. First, I just need to make sure there's a good electrical connection here. So some flux and then soldering until the solder comes all the way up the legs of that transistor. If you've not done soldering before, it's actually very easy. The key really is to make sure everything's hot enough before you put the solder in and you should get those nice kind of cone shaped bits. The one on the right was the best of the three. All I've got to do now is clip off the bits of the transistor legs that you don't need to stop them shorting out and clean up the leftover flux with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Okay, here's the exciting part. I've replaced the transistor, and while it's dark outside, I really want to give it a go just to see if this is the part that makes all the difference. Of course, I'll have to put it together properly, but before I do that, I'm gonna test it. You're right, this is a very strange camera angle, but it's the only way I can get this in shot and safely stay away from the power on this. This thing is plugged into the main, so you really don't want to be anywhere near it. I've got enough experience that I'm happy doing this, but be really careful if you're going to do anything similar. I'm going to turn this on the back, which is around here, and hopefully this thing won't turn on or it will just not explode. No magic smoke, fingers crossed. Okay. I mean, it's spinning. That is, uh, that's unexpected. Uh, and the screen says that it's, it is spinning. So, I mean, that's it. That single part was all that needed to be replaced. Uh, let's see if the on-screen controls work. So if I press the stop button, a bit difficult when it's moving around, but there we go. You can hear it powering down. I'm just going to put a bit of force back into it. And hey, one part that cost a few pence and this thing is fixed. I can't really believe it was that simple. One tiny part, and this thing is back to full function. Now, I do have to do one thing before I put it back together fully, and that is sort out this bare copper that's exposed on the bottom. Some of those bits of the PCB came off while I was cleaning it, and the right thing to do is cover it up with something non-conductive. You could use Kapton tape, but seeing as I've got it apart, I'm gonna put some nail polish on there, just to make sure that it doesn't short out against the aluminium case that's somewhere on the desk here. Okay, all fixed up. I've got some nail polish on there. I didn't pick the color, but it's the one I could find. Now it's time to put this back together and we're done. Back to a discount build montage. We're actually using the clips in the right order this time, putting the clippy things in the wrong one and finding the right one. Eventually, for some reason, it got dark. And then we clip in the rest of them. Luckily, they're all different, so it's not that hard. Final clippy bit and shove the wires in because that will just do. I can't be bothered to find a cable tie. Unnecessary shot of screwing what I think is a power resistor into the base. And then let's pretend that this wasn't just unnecessarily filmed. You've seen those clips before. And beauty shots. In terms of maker projects, I think this is pretty close to perfect. You take something that's broken, fix it, not spending a lot of money, and end up with a new tool at the end. Yes, I could sell it and I'd probably make a good profit, but what's more exciting is the idea of what I could do with this. I've already thought about how I could use it in my brewing science experiments or for analog photography and wet plate that I'm going to get into soon. Now, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it, but if you want to find out, there's only one way. I mean, there's a few, but subscribe to this or follow me on Instagram. That's probably the best one. See you next time. Okay, project done. Time to tidy up the desk. Ha <laughs> ha, no, we don't do that ever. We just push it to the back.